<laughs> uh, Chef Anthony Lamas needs very little introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. This man is an unbelievable culinary talent in Louisville. He has two restaurants, you know, Ceviche on Barstown Road, of course, and the new Ceviche on Goose Creek. I believe one is called a Latin restaurant and one is called a Latin bistro. Uh, he is now a neighbor of mine. We've become good buddies. And uh, he has been to the Beard House more times than we can count. He is singularly responsible for bringing Nuevo Latino cuisine to Louisville and arguably one of the finest efforts in the country. We are blessed to have him here tonight and his restaurants in town. And I'm psyched, so come on out of here. <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> good my to man. see you, friend. Good he to see is. you. It's, it's better with vodka. Yeah, I was no. wondering what you put in the drink. No, Does that yeah, should loosen us up a little bit? Tea. Yeah, I, yeah, I need loosening. Because <laughs> he said a bottle was missing. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's I'm what so Dean did. I'm so shy. I need the loosening here. But uh, <laughs> tremendous to have you here. I mean, I know what's been happening in your world because with the recent opening of the second restaurant, if it's anything like me, you're just probably yeah. saying to yourself, oh, why the hell did I do this? Why wasn't I, you know, satisfied with staying in one location? Because it's virtually impossible to be at both places. Exactly. And, uh, and it's uh, the ever difficult task of keeping things up to snuff yeah. and both. I so. think that's the hardest thing with our job is really learning yeah. to manage people and, and keep, you know, I want everything to be the same at both places. So, yeah. and like you said, you know, it's awesome. We have become yeah, closer good friends and, and, you know, we've always known each other, but I think we talk more these last seven Absolutely. months than we have in the 10 yeah, years. Yeah, it's weekly now. Yeah. So, uh, I know you you've know. got two terrific items. What are we doing first here? Well, first of all, I figured we'd do a ceviche. Uh, it's favorite. that time of the year where ceviche is very popular. Um, I do see some familiar faces and good to see you all. I know that you guys have been a big support to Dean and I and, and the, the Louisville restaurant community. So first of all, we're going to start off with ceviche. A lot of people, what is ceviche? Basically, it's, it's a, a seafood dish. All over Latin America, they do different versions. And that's what's kind of exciting because whether you're in Peru, they're going to serve it with sweet potato and a little lettuce cup. Or if you're in Mexico, they're going to serve it with corn chips and avocado. Or if you're in Ecuador, they'll serve it with roasted peppers and corn nuts. So everywhere you go, Latin America, they have their version of the seafood and each um, kind of little crunchy snack to go with it. Um, and, and, and choclo is a giant corn that they do in Peru. Um, but I'm going to do a straightforward uh, kind of my version. First of all, the main thing is you want to have your citrus, which we have here. And um, we have a little bowl, which I just squeezed some lime in here about, um, I guess about five minutes ago. And as you can see, it starts to cook already. See here on the bottom, you can see the raw part, but see how it's turned white there? Mm -hmm. That's just the citric acid. Just, and so the main thing is, depending on how rare or not rare, you don't want to do this for uh, you know more than a day because it's just going to continue to cook and become takes away from if the texture of the meat. You're having a party at six o'clock at night. You could conceivably do this at four and be in good exactly. shape, depending be, on how big you cut it, your beef. And halibut and is the fish that I prefer when it's in season. Of course, it gets out of season oh, in amazing. October or something like that. Well, so because it's such a delicate fish, if you use a harder, uh, more dense fish like snapper, it might take a little longer. Some fish can take two hours. Some can take four hours. Uh, one thing my mother taught me was with shellfish, we actually blanch it to medium rare, like you would do shrimp cocktail, because otherwise it starts to cook the outside. By the time it gets the inside, the outside's chewy. So with lobster and types of shellfish like that, we actually like to blanch. With ahi tuna or, or uh, oysters, we actually toss it right to order. You really don't want it to cook because you want that really nice, uh, you know, delicate flavor. So basically, you, you want to start off with some nice fish. You know, that's the main thing. You never want to use a frozen fish, and you have to really get to know your fishmonger because you really want the best qualities possible. Yeah, that's so, so we just you piece of halibut that's real pretty. And, and you can do it different ways. Now, if you, if you wanted to serve it like kind of like sashimi style, you could do this, which is known as tiratito. You can do some slices like that, and that way you can lay it on the plate. Um, but the way we're, we're doing this one, because depending on what I put into it, if, if I do um, avocado or cucumber, I'm going to cut them the same size as the fish. So basically, I'm just cutting them, as you can see here. I would think little, a sharp knife is crucial. Is, that's it. exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, and people say, what is ceviche? You know, I best describe it as a kind of a seafood salsa, so to speak because it's with chips and everything, or it's the Latin version of sushi, or the answer to sushi. And sushi has gotten so popular, maybe more people are into really trying fresh fish. So basically, we have our fish here, and I'm going to throw it right into this bowl here. And the main I, thing is you start with is some lime. I had this last week at his restaurant, I mean, because I know you, you have the salsa. the halibut. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just the halibut fantastic. is what I use when it's in season as our ceviche de, de dia. And I can do it almost raw. You yeah. Know, I mean, I love it. Exactly. It's, it's just such a, and you can eat this tirathedal style. Tirathedal is where the Peruvians were introduced to sashimi by the Japanese. As they came across the Pacific, one of the first places they landed was Peru, so they introduced sashimi. So it's kind of like sashimi without wasabi, but with more like chilies and lime. So once you've sliced it, you just kind just of drizzle, drizzle it over and you got with chopsticks and knees. Right, it's called right. tiratiro. It means to throw because it looked like thrown pieces tiratiro. of fish. Tiratiro. Uh, okay, so 
we have our lime, which I already had squeezed. So as you see, as you start putting the limes, it just starts, the citric acid starts to cook. Once we've got this going here, okay, and like he said, you, this is ready to eat right now. You just take a, a spoonful of this. Beautiful. So we have our fish going here, cooking in the lime. Now, there is a, another trick to this too. If you know that you're not gonna, if you notice you have your fish and it's cooking too quickly, you can actually strain the juice out of it and then you have your fish that's cooked. So you can let, you can actually do that part, get the cooking out of the way, drain the juice. When you're ready to have your dinner party, then you add in your flavoring mixture and, and your other, you can actually have a little juice, which we have some more lime in here. Like I said, jalapeno, avocado, and tomatillo, which is a green tomato. So we go right into here. Do people ever uh, not, for instance, if you didn't have the chimichurri and you just wanted to add in a, a loose diced herb, do they do? Can you do that? Yes, I mean, just mince exactly. cilantro and actually put it oh, in the yeah. fish and oh, be yeah. done with it. Yeah, you know? we've right. done uh, with salmon. I've done like a lemon dill broth where I chop up dill and some cucumbers. So salsa verde, green sauce, basically three green, and this is actually ready to go. Now in two hours it would be starting fully cooked here because the citric acid is starting to cook it. And what would I do is in the restaurant we serve it in different ways. Like I said, you know, different uh, in the Caribbean we have an ahi tuna ceviche that's served in a coconut, and that was when I was on a trip in the Caribbean. I noticed I had a conch ceviche served in a coconut. I was like, I love that. And they'll dice up pineapple and fry up plantains. So as you go to different countries, Costa Rica, Peru, Mexico, they all have their version of ceviche. So that's what fascinates me, is that I try to get inspired by all these different countries. Countries. And then pico de gallo, which is a straightforward raw salsa, where um, salsas are not always raw. It can be pureed or cooked. Uh, pico de gallo is always going to be a raw salsa. Basically, it's cilantro, onion, tomato. In this case, we have red and yellow tomato, but I've added some cucumber because I think cucumber goes great with this dish here. So we add for a little garnish, a little bit of the cucumber pico de gallo, which I have some nice homegrown tomatoes, local. <laughs> there you go. Very simple. You can, you can uh, garnish this. You can make little. Ooh. So pick up. 